Um, I, my name is Catherine Cronin um, with the National Forum and on behalf of all the team who you'll meet in just a moment, I'd like to welcome you uh, to this webinar on using open educational resources and open educational practices for teaching and learning. Um, there's a team of four of us who have um, developed uh, a resource in this area in consultation with many people across the sector. Um, and the purpose of the webinar today is not just to share the resource, but to uh, focus on conversation um, about it because we'd like to learn um, from you as well. So the hashtag we'll be using if you want to tweet or talk about this beyond the webinar is NF Open. And we will record the webinar and share it uh, after today. We'll share it with you. Um, if you if you signed up for the webinar, you'll get a link. And as I said, the resource that we're sharing today had four co-developers and we are gonna be the presenters in the webinar. We're all here, uh, as well as some members of the National Forum team supporting us. Um, so again, I'm Catherine Cronin. I'm a strategic education developer with the National Forum for Digital and Open Education. Hello everyone, I'm Claire McAvinia. I'm a learning development officer at the LTTC in TU Dublin and currently on part-time secondment as an educational developer with the National Forum. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Céline Peña. I'm Deputy Librarian in Natural Technology. I'm Angelica Risk, Lead Educational Developer at the Center of Transformative Learning in UL. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, everyone. Um, our outline for today is very straightforward. We wanted to start the webinar just by giving a little bit of rationale about where this work came from and the rationale for it. Uh, and then we'll um, share the link and give a brief tour of the resource and give you some time to, um, to have a look at it, to speak with each other about it, um, and then broaden that out to a larger um, discussion and Q&A session. Um, but we do have one reminder before we start talking about the webinar, I'll just hand over to Claire just for a moment. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah, this is one of the uh, national webinar series, which we have advertised on the site uh, recently, and you can see the dates here on Catherine's slide. Um, and the purpose of these uh, webinars is to address really what we've discovered over the past year, particularly the increasing need for agility in relation to curriculum, teaching, assessment and policy in our sector. And we're being called upon to be very adaptable in our face to face blended online context. So we're addressing that through these webinars. The next one on, it, on the 15th of April, we'll be looking at agile curricula that follows through to another in June. We have two on assessment in the meantime, particularly particularly focusing on issues arising over the past year during the pandemic, a further webinar on digital and a final one in October looking at transforming teaching and learning for student success. Okay, great. Thanks, Claire. Um, I know that we have uh, very many OER and OEP experts and champions uh, in the room today, but we also expect that maybe some people might be new to OER and OEP. So just um, on the order of first principles, we wanted to start with a definition of the terms that we use you know, in, the in the name of this resource. So OER being open educational resources, which um, as many people know, are not just free resources, but free resources that have been openly licensed to permit reuse, adaptation, and so on. And OEP is open educational practices, which is kind of a higher level of abstraction from OER and really about um, how we use OER, particularly in teaching and learning. So that's what we're talking about when we refer to OER and OEP. And um, just a little bit about where this emerged. It, it's, uh, you know, it didn't just emerge out of nowhere. Um, the, there's been a steady evolution of work, um, certainly in the sector and specifically in the National Forum in the area of OER and OEP. So going back to 2015, the National Forum published a research report called Learning Resources and Open Access um, in Higher Education Institutions in Ireland. Um, both Angelic and Claire um, worked on that report. And um, that looked at really the, the attitudes and knowledge around open, you know, across the Irish higher education sector. Things have progressed a lot since that time. In 2019, we had a formal consultation, the National Forum with colleagues in teaching and learning and libraries from across a number of institutions, just to glean what, how people were supporting um, open education practice um, across higher education and what the National Forum could do to support that. So we hosted a webinar with a speaker from Creative Commons, <clears throat> excuse me, about OER and open licensing. We had follow-on conversations again more broadly and we learned that 
Um, what was needed and what was requested were targeted resources. There's an awful lot of information about OER um, specifically uh, online, but what were needed were Irish HE focused specific resources. That's what would be most helpful. So in later 2019, we published the National Forum Open Licensing Toolkit. And those conversations and engagement continued. Um, we learned that a, que a, lot, a question a lot of people have when they started openly licensing their resources to make them into OER was um, that they weren't sure which license to choose. There are a number of different Creative Commons licenses. So in 2020, we published a guide um, called How to Choose an Open License. And again, we've had conversations and we've supported work that's going on in institutions in these areas. Of course, uh, in the light of all that's happened in 2020, we know that there were a lot of people looking at open education for the first time. Um, so we tried to amplify what was going on in the sector. We shared um, some of that work in, a, in an Open Education Week list of, um, of OER activities across the sector. Um, and now this resource sharing um, using OER and OEP for teaching and learning um, is kind of a culmination of, of that previous work. So I'll hand over to Claire because we'd like to know a little bit about you and maybe why you're here um, in the webinar. Thank you uh, again, Catherine, and, and welcome everyone. It's, it's wonderful to have such a strong response to the webinar today and to this topic area. And we thought it would be useful to, um, to ask you um, really about what's brought you here today. What's your main area of interest and activity with regard to open? What do you do? What would you like to do regarding OER and OEP? So we have a little poll there. I can see uh, somebody's uh, answered already. Um, please feel free to respond there. That's great. We'll leave it up just for about a half a minute to let you respond quick fire and then we'll share the results on that. So whether it's about learning more, finding examples, extending your practice, helping others, sharing your OER, OEP more widely, finding collaborators, or maybe doing some more open education research. I'll just leave it for a couple seconds more. Nearly everyone has responded now at this point. Um, so we'll just give it a couple more seconds. Okay, I'm going to end the poll just for now. By all means, continue in the chat and we'll have more chance for discussion later. And I'll share the results with you there. So here we go. So yeah, I think um, many of us would like to learn more. And I mean, speaking for myself, there always is more to learn around this topic uh, and working with colleagues. And this process has been so valuable uh, for me. So we all, uh, I think, are engaged with learning more and supporting others. It's lovely to see that coming through in the result here um, because this is such a collaborative activity. And I think we will see that coming through over the course of the webinar today. Examples, again, we got this very practical um, nature of our work, particularly at the moment. Um, so that's reflected in your result there. Um, and to extend our open practices, absolutely. Hopefully, I think you'll find something in the webinar in the course of today that will, will respond to all of those uh, uh, answers that you've given there to the, the poll. Okay, so we'll move along and I'll stop the sharing there for the minute. And Thanks, Claire. That's great. Thank you. Okay, um, that's really useful just knowing that some people here are beginners or want to learn more and some people are already supporting others. Um, this was very much our intention um, in developing the resource was that we thought it could be useful for people who just want to learn more as individuals, but also to those who are already supporting others in their institutions in their in open practice and trying to build open capabilities in institutions. So again, um, we want to support um, all those levels of use, um, but we also want to learn from you about what you're doing. So just some four key features um, about the project that we wanted to share before we, um, before we share the URL, and that's just the ethos behind it, um, the purpose, what we hope the purpose will be, the focus on collaboration and community, as I said, and looking to the future about what next. So um, to start with, um, this resource is really about the use of OER, as I said, and OEP for teaching and learning, but underlying open um, for anybody who would call themselves an open education practitioner is a sense of an open ethos. So we just wanted to speak a little bit about that, about you know, kind of the shared values that we had um, in developing this work. Um, and really that is about the potential of open education. And we share a belief that open educational resources and practices have potential benefits in three main areas. Um, and these are increasing access, furthering equity, and enhancing pedagogy. 
So um, I'll just go through each of these just briefly. Um, in terms of access, this is, you know, if you read anything about um, open educational resources, this is probably the first word that you'll see. Open educational resources are about increasing access to education. So in our case, um, if we're looking at the context of Irish um, higher education, we are thinking about access for students, um, access for teachers and all who support teaching and learning, and really access for anyone. Um, although we know it's not literally anyone because there's a certain level of knowledge and skills um, and meaningful co connectivity that people need to have um, to access OER generally. But when we share resources as OER, um, as individuals, we're sharing value across the education sector and far beyond. And oftentimes you never know who might use your open resources. Um, uh, and so they're, said, they're, they're shared sometimes with a real sense of humility about saying, this is something I've developed that's useful and others may find it useful as well. So I'm sharing it with an open license. The second area um, where we feel that OER and OEP have potential is in the area of um, furthering equity. And of course, this is this is central as well in, in most discussions of open education. It's always been a key feature of the ethos of openness, but it's been particularly so in the past year. And you know, we've discussed that um, as a group and in the national forum that you know, whatever any of us might have known about inequality, you know, before 2020, we certainly know a lot more now based on all that has happened in the past year. So in terms of um, furthering equity, OER can reduce overall costs for students. Um, if, if teachers are using open textbooks and open resources. OER have what we call persistent availability. In other words, something like an open textbook or an open resource that's used for teaching is available before, during, and after um, a module, as well as during any breaks in study. So again, we know from um, studies done by the USI and others that you know, financial hardship that students might have been experiencing has certainly been exacerbated in the past year. So the fact that those resources are available persistently um, can be really powerful. Um, OER are also open for addressing diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we've all had the experience of using a, a resource for teaching that we feel is not inclusive in terms of gender, in terms of race, in terms of culture, in terms of gender identity, you know, many different ways. So when we use open resources, they are editable and we can add perspectives that might be missing um, specifically to better represent um, local and, and marginalized identities. And finally, OER, you know, more broadly supports sustainable development goal number four, which is ensuring inclusive and quality education for all. And finally, in the area of pedagogy, we could probably talk about this the most. And uh, there's a there's a large part of the resource that um, that addresses open pedagogy and OEP. Um, but as I mentioned, OER can be adapted and used for a specific context. So you can add, um, you can add language, you can add perspectives, you can add case studies that are relevant for your students, your location, your module. Um, students can co-create OER as well. So we can move away from single authored um, resources for teaching and learning and get students to engage in creating and co-creating knowledge. Um, it also opens up a lot of opportunities in the area of authentic assessment. So for example, students in the course of learning or the course of uh, assessment, actually creating resources that can be open and used by the community, used by others, and thereby contributing to public knowledge. And of course, all of these activities are really powerful ways to develop digital literacies, learning about licensing, learning about copyright, learning about OER, our digital um, literacies and capabilities that students can take you know, well beyond their current module. Um, diversifying the curriculum I mentioned already and the potential for local and global collaboration are, are enormous. Um, and, you know, certainly we can talk more about that, but, you know, by thinning the walls of the classroom, um, as is often said, and, you know, helping students to engage with students in other modules and in other institutions in other countries, um, we open up a lot of possibilities in terms of um, collaboration and pointing towards, you know, what Bell Hooks calls education as the practice of freedom. So in addition to this shared ethos about what open education is and can be um, in relation to higher education, um, each of the four of us who developed this brings a personal commitment to open education as well. So we just wanted to share that really briefly um, because we all brought something different, I suppose, to the project. So um, in my case, my role in the National Forum is to support open educational practice um, in the Irish higher education sector, but I also have um, a long-term commitment personally to um, using critical approaches to open education, both research and practice. Um, and Claire? 
Thank you, Catherine. I think um, for me, my um, encounter with open educational resources in the first instance was through supporting colleagues to use the virtual learning environment in my previous role. And we were still calling them things like learning objects, um, which was perhaps quite a content oriented focus at that time. And it's great to see it has evolved well beyond that to something that is collaborative and community focused and now is, is talked about as open educational practice uh, and something I've endeavoured to reflect through my work as an academic developer and getting participants in programmes to engage with it and to produce their own OER. I'm going to hand over to Angelica. I think uh, from my perspective as an educational developer, I believe I have a role in being an advocate for open practice as part of my own teaching and scholarly philosophy. I'm particularly interested in the ways that OEP can uh, work in a community of practice and the, the interesting benefits of that, and the ways that it can serve to perhaps address teachers' concerns around time management and content creation, uh, copyright compliance, and so on. So that would be my view. And Celine, I think. As well. Thank you, Angelica. Well, for me, really embracing openness in my profession, the library profession, where we know knowledge and resources are far too often kept behind paywall. That was my main motivation to join the team. Um, I want to support library colleagues to raise awareness of open practices and OER in the academic community. Um, I think we need to start rethink collection development to incorporate OER, and we need to encourage collaboration with our colleagues to start using, reusing, and why not publishing OER. So Angelica, do you want to bring us to the purpose of the resource? Thanks, Celine. Yeah, so uh, paying some attention to the purpose of this initiative. As Catherine was saying before, many resources exist around OER and OEP, but uh, there's a need to localize and contextualize these to an Irish context uh, by bringing, for example, uh, relevant uh, information and um, learning about um, copyright law or OEP experiences and so on. And on the other hand, uh, we are aware that many, uh, many pockets of expertise and practice around the country, many of you would be involved in those, and there's a need to curate those. Um, so we learned, for example, recently during Open Education Week about the great work with Lead Guides and many more. So that was the, the rationale of it. But uh, ultimately, if we move on to the next slide, uh, thank you. What we are aiming to, to build is capacity, open capacity in the Irish education sector. Uh, it was very interesting to see the result of that poll that many of you it's, uh, are coming here with that main motivation. And uh, we are interested in opening the, that discussion and that community discussion about the ways that OEP and OER can permeate through, through the sector. So uh, Claire will actually uh, bring that point forward. Thank you, Angelica. And I think, yes, um, we're calling on you to comment to feedback on the resource um, following on from today, but building on a tradition of a lot of collaboration and a community focus in relation to this work over many years in Ireland. And we're fortunate in Ireland to have had that. Um, so from the early 2000s, we've seen initiatives around the development and the sharing of OER in Ireland. Um, people might remember the National Digital Learning Repository from quite a long time ago now, 2004-05. Later it was called National Digital Learning Resources. That was from the era of big repositories, which has sort of come and gone a little bit. We collaborated internationally at that time as well, though with colleagues in the UK who were working with Joram and the Centre for Excellence, for example, in uh, reusable learning objects, again, was the label at the time. And a collaborative model very quickly emerged through the NDLR communities of practice, the local innovation project that were undertaken at that time and many of those links are still there and people are still working together and um, subsequently as Catherine has mentioned the National Forum after it was launched and began to undertake research and development in this area funded focused research around learning resources and open access in higher education institutions and that work was undertaken by the former NDLR partners, librarians, people to develop that community of practice in the sector in relation to OER and to develop OEP again through those relationships. Again, that's been strengthened by the professional development framework, uh, which the forum has been 
uh, working towards for some years and then subsequently launched in 2016 through our own accredited programs and initiatives in the institutions. Um, also through the open courses, which again developed in the open, uh, available openly and uh, to enable colleagues to work towards their goals in terms of the PD framework. And it's our hope that this resource uh, will develop over time to become a further open course within that suite leading to a digital badge. And through all of our work that we can model OEP to colleagues in this way through teaching and learning development practice, through how we work with people who teach through the work of the forum, that that development is a shared endeavour and not located with any one team or initiative. So I'm going to pass over to Celine to talk a little bit more about the future as we see it emerging. Thank you, Claire. Um, well, the resources is here now, so it's here to support the development of open capability across the Irish higher education sector. It will support OER and OEP champions in the sector, and many of whom are here today. Uh, I'm talking about staff in teaching and learning units, library colleagues, the academic community, and of course, the resource will support students with access to more varied resources at zero cost and the introduction of open pedagogy to support collaborative work, for example. The resources is here also to help libraries to support students with various learning needs using a, a diversified and targeted range of resources. Libraries have a, a crucial role to play in ensuring access to new resources and equity for all stakeholders, as we know. This can be achieved by including, for example, OER in future collection development policies, by supporting the inclusion of OER in reading lists, um, directing staff who teach towards OER and when researching new material, and of course, encouraging them to adopt, adapt, and why not publish open educational resources. Now, the next point here is a really exciting point. The resource will also help um, to increase collaboration in our sector towards the new national resource hub of OER for teaching and learning. So that's a very exciting development, having our own there. Next slide, please. Okay, so we have the resource. Let's think even further. What if, what if this resource could inspire Irish higher education institutions to invest in open publishing tools, for example, in platforms to support staff and to ensure access to OER for students. Even better, could our resource encourage staff who teach to adapt, adopt, create, share OER to boost the presence of Irish higher education creative OER at national and also in international hubs and platforms? So I think it's now a time to share the resource with you all. Yes, so uh, we've done a lot of talking about this resource, but we haven't really shared the resource. So I think we need to do that. Um, and we are happy to share it with all of you today, but you're the first people to, um, to see it um, outside of our small group of developers and reviewers. Um, it is a work in progress. And um, I think Claire, you're going, you shared the link in the chat. Yes, thank you. Um, it's a work in progress and we just wanted to, um, to reinforce that um, we hope it will be useful and supplement and complement the work that's already going on in institutions. But we really also want to hear back what you're doing and what might be included in the resource. So Claire is gonna do a, a little bit of a walkthrough and then we're going to break up um, into small groups um, just to have some smaller discussions with you about um, how you think the resource might be used. Thank you, Catherine. I hope everyone can see uh, the resource on the screen share now. So you have the link to this in the chat and we invite you to open it into your own web browsers or into a separate tab. Um, you should see this landing page and we encourage you to use the start here uh, button to begin. And just to guide in terms of navigation briefly, there are four main sections. You can access them from here on the landing page uh, through clicking on the images or the more info. Um, but those menus are replicated across the top as well. So I'll just visit one of them here so we can go into understanding open and you'll see you have the drop down appearing there, but also then this nice visual uh, tile format on the page so you can begin to work through the resource in this way. So again, just to visit one piece of this to show you how that will look. 
you'll keep again the menu on the sidebar here to enable you to, to walk through it easily at any stage. And we have um, previous and next also later in the page uh, for you to use. And you'll note that we have fields open for comments and feedback within each section of the resource. If you prefer not to do that uh, in the resource itself, um, there is some provision around keeping your details private there. Um, but uh, additionally, there's an option to email feedback and we do really warmly invite uh, feedback and comment to enable the further development of the resource. Um, and the final piece there is all the resources that um, we have used to help develop this uh, and to bring it to this point uh, at this stage today. Okay, so I'll return to the home page. And I think um, I think at this stage, we'll get ready to, to move into the next part of the session. Okay, uh, we, um, what we'd like to do now, I, I know that a couple of people have to leave early, but we're hoping that many of you might stay around to speak with each other um, as you look through the resource and maybe to share some ideas and some questions that you have. So we're just going to um, post a list of sample questions um, to prompt discussion. Please don't feel constrained by those. We really would just like to break into um, our breakout rooms. Um, they'll be randomly allocated. There'll be one person in the breakout room who's a facilitator. It'll be either a member of um, the project team, one of the four of us, or someone from the National Forum. Um, and we'll just stay in those breakout rooms for, we have about um, 15 minutes um, to do that. And then we'll come back to the large group and deal with any um, larger questions or comments. Okay, so I hope that you'll stay around to do that. We look forward to hearing from you. Um, I'm not sure yet what happened in the other breakout rooms, but it was really lovely to be able to have a, a smaller chat um, about what we're doing, some really thought provoking questions. Um, I would like to ask, Ask anyone if, if perhaps some questions came up in your breakout room that um, that you weren't able to have answered or that you thought were really important that you wanted to share with the big group, please put them in the chat. Because um, we can we, we have a little bit of time just in this larger Q&A. Um, I'll mention something that came up in the room I was in just to reiterate that this resource is licensed with a Creative Commons CC BY license. It is one of the most permissive and open licenses that, that one can use. And it simply means that you can use the resource in whole or in part to do whatever you'd like with it. You can use it in whole, you can take it apart, use pieces of it, adapt it, um, whatever you like. And all that's required is attribution you know, to, to the national forum, that's it. So um, we, we'd really like um, pe people to use it. Um, so any, any other, um, any of the other breakout rooms have anything come up that they'd like to share back? Um, Brian, see your, I see your question here. Uh, we have a vast amount of resources developed this year. How can we exploit them and ensure they're not lost after lockdown, institutional or national approach or via the forum? Um, is Ronan here? R Ronan, would you like to speak? I am, yes. Um, this is, I suppose, a, a wonderful introduction to the, the area of, of, of resources in Ireland. Um, we are also working on designing and developing a, a national resource hub. So the National Forum has a resource hub on its website. And what we've been doing over the last few months is engaging with the sector to find out, I suppose, features and discussions around resources and how they would like them presented. So we're actually working on the idea of a national resource hub where we'll have open education resources for the, the Irish context um, in a very searchable, very findable way. And that means that um, the resources as people populate and contribute will be able to tag and metadata, um, I suppose, tag them with metadata to support that. So that's going on and is due to be launched in the middle of June. And uh, that'll be a place where people can find, uh, look for resources, network, and also develop, I suppose, contribute and uh, even submit their resources to be included. So it'll be a really good um, build on this. And I think that's something that will, will really help the sector and, um, and what you've seen here today, um, it'll really support it. Thank you so much, Ronan. And that is due to the, the first development of that will be released in June. Is that the plan? Yes, middle of June. Yep, yep June 18th, I think. Yeah, that's the plan. Okay. Um, yeah, so really the, the, per the main purpose of this resource is about building capacity 
you know, open education capacity within the Irish higher education sector. And the hub is going to be, you know, a space where people can, can share, you know, um, share and search for um, resources. Um, questions now. Um, the resource looks great. James Brunton, I think in the early section showing why OEP, some of there could possibly be reframed in terms of practical problems that could be solved using a particular OEP. Do you find that students do not have textbooks? Using an open textbook would remove barriers to obtaining the textbook. Indeed, James, and these are just the kinds of things. We know there's experience in the Irish higher education sector in many of the areas that are in the resource. So like you, James, if you've, you've experienced in this, that's just the kind of feedback that we would like to get and we can, we would like to continually improve um, the, the resource with that knowledge that's in the sector. So thank you for that. Um, and just that, that we'd like everybody to know that as well. If you if you read a particular page or section and just think, oh, I know something wonderful that could be included here, um, let us know. There, there's a comment box, as Claire said, on every page of the resource. Okay, thanks, Geraldine. Um, any other questions, perhaps from either maybe the facilitators of the breakout rooms would like to relay any key questions? I, I would like to comment on an interesting conversation that um, took place in the room in terms of those boundaries uh, and that culture uh, that uh, may exist uh, in, the, in, the, in the teaching population around uh, intellectual property of resources and the possible barriers and resistance points, I suppose. Um, perhaps any of the members in, in, in my group uh, would like to elaborate on that, uh, feel free. Um, but uh, basically, I, I, it, it, yes, I think so. You're coming on mic, isn't it? I, I think. I'm just coming in. Sorry. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, thank you. My my question in the room was because I've been working around on sort of academic integrity issues and around academic misconduct as well recent in the re recently, and I wondered what the relationship is between OER and the opportunities for abuse, particularly by um, websites such as JEG or um, any of those other sort of file sharing um, online services. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, um, that's a question, Sue, that's, um, I suppose, in the philosophy of um, doing something that fosters and supports learning and teaching and that furthers equity for a lot of very good reasons we we we, we don't want to stop that because there's a risk that some may, people may abuse it i mean people just like Chegg uses might use oer they use proprietary materials as well so that i mean it's kind of a separate issue i think um, the point about um, sharing open educational resources is for example, OER assignments, what educators who use OER assignments have found is that inviting students to create OER as part of their assignments, moving beyond this private transaction between a, a teacher and a student to create something that's gonna be shared openly um, enables kind of a great investment in the work, uh, high motivation, um, embracing student agency. They get to work on something that they feel is really important and the quality of the work is often very high and not you know, reproducible by anyone else, because it's about what the student um, um, is interested in engaging with and sharing with the public um, under their name. Yeah, so it's, it's a very, you know, it's a very broad discussion, but open can support um, academic integrity in different ways rather than locking down, but just, you know, opening up. I would like to concur on that point, Catherine, and you kind of I suppose point to the interplay between uh, or the overlap of academic integrity and open educational practice, I see it around the area of, of authentic assessment. And that is the where the scope for, I suppose, more creative design, teaching design perhaps may take a better place. Mm -hmm. But happy to have that conversation in more detail as well, Sue, you know, given the work that you're doing. Can I come in there a second? Uh, Please. In here. Yeah, a, a discussion in ours came up around, um, well, to one thing which has already been answered about the checklist, but the second thing was about, you know, sharing of OE practice. Somebody suggested perhaps, you know, you could have scenarios or videos with people who have put, you know, gone, in, gone and done OEP practices and how they've worked out, you know, because for, for, for some members of our group, it is important 
like they understand OER and all that, but it's actually putting it into practice and what that looks like in a real scenario. Um, and this is people who are teaching, Katrina? Yeah, teaching or supporting others who teach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that we um, have mentioned of throughout the resource is just about finding colleagues within your institution. I mean, and good places to look are a teaching and learning center, the library, you know, first ports of call. Sometimes you might find colleagues, you know, in your discipline as well. Um, but once you learn what the nuts and bolts are, really, it becomes more of a kind of community effort where you can kind of talk about um, talk about these things. But the expertise around licensing, around repositories, uh, all those kinds of things should be in um, your library and or the, your teaching and learning center. So um, it's hard to answer questions, you know, specifically about, you know, individual institutions, but all libraries have open access policies, for example. Um, and OER is really about leveraging a lot of what we already know about open access of research outputs and applying that to teaching and learning resources. I suppose it's more about the applying it part. How is it applied? Are there examples of where it's been applied? And perhaps I have a couple of examples there, like, you know, of, well, I have these OERs, um, I, I want to be an open access pedagogical person. Mm -hmm. How do I actually go about that? Give me examples of where this has been done in other institutions in wherever, you know, that kind of thing. Section 4.1 in the resource. Um, is has a list of um, examples. Examples. Oh, that's it. Actually, that's it. Examples. Links. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Catherine. That probably answers the question. Then, fair play, great. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> there was a suggestion in our room that we we might over time develop maybe some video testimonials or clips with mm -hmm. with academics as well. So I think I think that would just pick up on that point, and hopefully we might have this the scope to do that later on. That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. And and once again, just the the notion that um, you know today is kind of a point in time of a, of a conversation. But we'd you know the, the resource is a resource, of course. But we also would like to use it as just a way of of communicating, people sharing. So in the chat here or. Um, you know, in the actual resource, please put links to, you know, relevant resources that you'd like to share with the community. We'd be delighted. Um, we have time for maybe one more question and then I'm, I'm just gonna wrap up. I want to respect people's time and, 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 and when we said we would. Okay. Orna, you, you're mentioning there that there's a new guide at, at DCU. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I probably would have been faster just to say it. hi, hi everyone, and apolo apologies for coming so late. Yeah, we we have a lovely collaboration between ourselves in, in the Open Education Unit and the Library, uh, and we put together uh, a quite a simple resource uh, called uh, Go Open: A Beginner's Guide to, to Open Education, and it kind of is 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 trying to get people started on those roads. It's got some examples. It explains some of the terminology, because what we found is getting to grips with some of the terminology takes a bit of time. So it's a nice digital resource. It's at the designers at the moment, and we're going to have a, a launch event with your, your good self featured Catherine uh, at the end of April. It's also going to be a lib guide on the DCU library website. So it's quite, quite a nice bit of work. And it was from a small bit of seed funding from the forum. So uh, there'll be an, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll circulate the details maybe closer with an invite. Okay. All that's, welcome. Okay, that's brilliant, Orna. Sorry, your sound cut out there for a minute. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I'm just going to share my screen once one more time here. Is that showing? Okay, just a really quick reminder about the date of our next webinar, and then we'll um, we'll we'll say thank you and wrap up after that. Um, Claire, can I hand over to you? Thank you, Catherine, and thanks so much for the opportunity just to, to mention this again, and we'd warmly encourage and invite everyone to join the subsequent webinars, particularly the next one on 15th of April, same time, 12.30, we're going to open this discussion around the Agile curriculum, um, stemming, as I said earlier, from the HCI Pillar 3 initiatives, um, which have really foregrounded this concept of agility in relation to programme design in Irish higher education institutions. So we'll be hearing from five of those projects 
projects to share uh, their understandings and where their work is taking them in relation to that at that point and also hearing from uh, a couple of employers again to enrich the discussion um, that will continue in the subsequent webinar and into a national forum in sight later in the year so we do really encourage and welcome your participation in the discussion around that, that theme. Thanks Claire. Um, and finally, I mean, is this an overwhelming slide or, or not? This is just shows you how much we want to be in touch with you. So um, as I said, today is just a, a starting point. Um, we applaud, support, and really want to maintain contact with everyone in the sector who's doing work in this area. We thank all the colleagues who did open work um, nationally and internationally that has become part of this resource and we want to keep it going. So please be in touch with any of the four of us who were the developers here. Um, there's an open at teachingandlearning.ie if you want to just communicate with the team as a whole and um, of course with any of us in the national forum. So really thanks so much for your time today um, and for all your work and um, best of luck and hope we hear from you. <laughs>